George Ignatius Rizan was born on October 11th, October 21st, sorry, 1942, in the parish of St. David's. He was educated at St. Dominic's Roman Catholic Primary School and at Presentation Boys College, commonly called PBC. He attended the University of Calgary, Canada, Carlton University, the University of the West Indies, and the Grenada Teachers College. He holds a certificate of education from the University of the West Indies, degree in Bachelor of Arts, Master of Arts in History and Economics from the University of Calgary, Canada, and the degree of Master of Arts in International Economics relation from Carlton University, again in Canada. In 1984, Mr. President entered politics and for three consecutive terms was elected to the Grenada House of Representatives. First with the New National Party and then with the um, National Democratic Congress, formerly called the NDC. In 87, George Bazan formed and met the National Democratic Party, which later merged with the Herbert Blaise led Grenada National Party and Dr. Francis Alexis led Grenada Democratic, Democratic Movement in August of 1984 to create the, no, the new National Party, commonly referred to as the NNP. In April of 87, Brazil went into opposition and founded the National Democratic Congress, NDC. He was subsequently succeeded as the NDC leader by the Honorable Nicholas Braffitt. Mr. Braffitt became Prime Minister following an NEC victory in the 1990 Grenada General Election. George Brazil was elected head of the National Democratic Congress in September of 94, followed by the resignation of Sir Nicholas Braffitt as party leader. He then became Grenada's sixth Prime Minister on February 1, 1995, and served for four months when Mr. Braffitt stepped down as a Prime Minister, and a new Prime Minister was elected following the NDC loss of June 1995 general election. Brisson was a humble, disciplined, and principled man. Despite his extraordinary achievements, he always placed his feelings and personal interests aside to do what was best for the party and the nation. Thus, on a number of occasions, after assessing the situation, he graciously gave way to the most seasoned and better known candidates of the party. He dedicated himself to helping students grow and develop into stars, and always reminded them to remain grounded in our origins while they achieved success. He supported the farmers at the agricultural sector as a whole. He was warm, thoughtful, knowledgeable, caring, peaceful, and determined to improve the lives of Grenadians and to change the course of Grenadians' history. He always gave his best serving Grenada with distinction. As we honor his memories, let us remember the lessons that he has taught us. Let us be inspired by the life he lived. Let us draw from his strength, his vision, and his courage. And let us build upon the foundation that he laid. May his spirit live on in the consciousness and hearts of the people whose lives he touched. Rest in peace, Brother Brisem. Rest in peace, George Ignatius Brisant. Your name will linger, you will not fade. For the knowledge you imparted is permanently etched on the pages you left and in the minds of students on whose ears your wisdom fell. You who held the wheel to help steer the ship after the days of sorrow is worthy 
of our thanks. Your selfless acts did not escape our gaze, and the commendations you received were well deserved. Educator, economist, prime minister, and patriot true, many are wiser today because of you. The Brizan who became the founder of political parties, the leader of popular movements, the advisor to popular movements and to the student movement, to the New Jewel movement, um, even to the labor movement, and the, the national political leader who became prime minister. Um, unfortunately for us, a very short-lived prime ministership so that his real mark, his real understanding of leadership as something that was inclusive and something that was, was wholesome, I think we didn't get enough of it in Grenada because his, his national leadership in office was so short-lived. And then we, be, we got to know him as a statesman. And I believe the model that people like Jimmy Carter and later on uh, Bill Clinton developed was already embraced by George Bizan. That is to say, having served at the highest national level to return with grace and equal vigor to the life of civilian to the life of statesman. He did everything in the last years since he was prime minister. He wrote more, he advised more, he loved more. He was fond, I know when we started Grenell, he would come to Grenville, uh, at which point he began to suffer from, uh, visibly anyway, from diabetes. He became a teacher of how to live with diabetes. He talked about it. He, he praised the, the, the indigenous food that gave his sustenance and his, his ability to cope with diabetes. I could see him now coming down the stairs of, of the, y, uh, the YWCA building in Grenville by, by the car park. Ambassador Posu, you know where I'm speaking about that building there. He, I, I, the last time we had with Claude Douglas and some others, we, he came up with his aid because he was beginning to lose his eyesight and came and spent three hours talking to the young people of Grenada about his own life and how his experience with, with that kind of illness had drawn him back into the culture of food, the culture of food research the culture of food innovation. And he received people in his house. He went to the, to the community when he could. He was on the national radio. He lived a full and generous civilian life once he had left national political office. But the, the, the interesting thing is, his death gives us the opportunity to reflect on the goodness of his life. And I'm always impressed with the way George Rizan consciously lived his life above the fray of corruption, above the fray of the many pitfalls that are in our path, especially when we get into public life. He was able to conduct his life in a way that kept him constantly above that fray. And for that, I think many of us should say thanks to George Rizan. Again, to all of us here and his family members, my condolences. Uh, George, may your soul rest in peace. I remember visiting him some years ago, and upon hearing my voice, he said, could not see, but he said, that is Derek James, my good boy. And he told his wife, I used to teach him.
It was these things that many of us remember of George because he wanted us to do what is right for ourselves, our family, and Grenada. He always encouraged us to give back to our country, and so many of us did. And as I stand here today, as the Consul General of Grenada, I owe a lot of my education and upbringing to George Ignatius Prison. His contribution to me personally will always be remembered. His contribution to Grenada, Karaku and Pitimati, the Caribbean and the world at large, has certainly left an indelible mark on all of us as Grenadians, as Caribbean people and people of the world. As George goes to another place, I say may his soul rest in peace and may all of us thank him for his contribution. And I want to thank his family once again for allowing us the time to share in his life. Thank you very much. Grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.